Um, welcome everyone. I am Wilma Hodges. I'm the um, Sky Community Manager and I'll be moderating the session today. Um, I just want to introduce you all to um, our presenter today for the Aggregated Dashboard and Harvesting Survey session. Um, our presenter is Tom Rangers. I hope I... Okay, so Tom has uh, 35 plus years of experience programming and designing as a system architect. He has a master's in computer science and um, from the technology uh, or Technical University of Eindhoven in the Netherlands, and he has a lot of experience with other programming languages. Um, he is uh, currently setting up a learning company that's uh, working with learning analytics, and he's one of the core developers of the Welcome, everyone, uh, in this talk about aggregated dashboards, uh, learning analytics, uh, specifically based on Xerti, uh, but um, in the future meant as a broader tool. Um, I'll briefly uh, tell about the, some history uh, on where we uh, came from uh, as, a, as the Xerti community and me as the CTO of D-Learning and uh, the feedback and issues we got back from our uh, users. Um, and then I will present uh, the new solution uh, that um, I will show to you today. <clears throat> My name is Tom Reinders. I'm CTO of D-Learning and one of the core developers of Xerti. Um, and uh, as, uh, as such, uh, I have uh, been working on uh, learning analytics in Xerti, uh, implementing things like SCORM and XAPI tracking and adding LTI, etc. cetera. And um, uh, one of the first major um, uh, achievements we had is, is the goal in, in, in 2018, that was Xerti 3.6. Uh, was making it possible for non-programmers, i.e. teachers, uh, to use learning analytics and develop adaptive learning without programming. And what we introduced back then was the standard Xerti dashboard, uh, which give you uh, uh, an overview of um, what students have been doing on a module level. So you, the, 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 the data you're seeing on this screen is limited to one specific Xerti module. And the other thing is that we introduced the adaptive content page and in the adaptive, con sorry, uh, some of the pages are in Dutch. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Dutch, um, but I'll, I'll explain and highlight uh, the important uh, uh, parts of this screen. So this is an adaptive content page um, and basically it shows you some results of what I did earlier or what the students did earlier. Okay, basically, you, you, you are in a learning object and you, you run through uh, the interactivities and then uh, you can add as a teacher or as an author, you can add this adaptive content page uh, where you can summarize the results. What you can also do is um, show uh, data of uh, a completely different pages as long as they are part of the same Xerti install. So what you see here is that I had some some interactivities about video, about images, and about audio. And uh, for video, I scored uh, or the student scored 33 percent, and the, uh, the images also 33 percent, and the audio also 33 percent. And you can choose these boxes and then it will give you some uh, more detailed data and it gives you also um, uh, a distribution of the scores of other uh, participants and in this case it will also show you that there were three participants in this particular module. Um, well this dashboard and also the adaptive content page have been in use for several months, years now, uh, uh, and certainly organizations in the Netherlands, uh, from organizations in the Netherlands, we received quite some feedback. Uh, what we do in the Netherlands as D-Learning is 
host and support um, Xerti installs for educational institutions and other kinds of uh, um, uh, organizations. And, and that's one of the reasons why uh, we get much uh, very much feedback out of the Netherlands because we are very close to the end users. One of the complaints about uh, the standard dashboard is that you can only use the dashboard if you have access to the module uh, as an author in Xerti. Uh, and that um, means that uh, you will not be able to share the dashboard with uh, students because uh, it will show data of fellow students. Um, also, uh, the dashboard is really geared to uh, uh, show the uh, tracking data of a module and, and, and doesn't know anything about groups or um, uh, if a module is used by several teachers, uh, how those uh, uh, students are uh, uh, yeah, um, organized in groups. And so the, the, the dashboard will show you uh, all the tracking data of all the st uh, students, uh, which might be an issue with the GDPR, uh, certainly here in Europe. Um, and the dashboard is, is, is based on XAPI data only. So it, it, it only shows you uh, what has been done. It doesn't show you what hasn't been done. So it doesn't give the teacher any insight of students that haven't started yet. And uh, another uh, much heard complaint is that if you have a curriculum or a course that contains five or six uh, of these modules, you have five or six of these uh, uh, dashboards. And although the data is very detailed, uh, you don't get an overview uh, as a teacher on, on the whole course. Um, for the dashboard and also for the tracking and the learning analytics, uh, we use uh, uh, LTI quite intensively. And the way uh, we implemented LTI in the beginning within Xerti uh, turned out to be quite some burden on system administrators of some systems. Uh, we used uh, Moodle as a kind of a reference, what was uh, doable and not doable. Uh, but uh, for example, if uh, an institution used uh, Brightspace, uh, a sysadmin had to uh, add each module as an external tool, uh, which was uh, uh, rather unpractical. Unpractical. So uh, we set a new goal, and the new goal is a aggregated dashboard uh, that will show uh, all the students in a specific group, and only the group, uh, the students that have enrolled in that course and for that uh, group, and it will also show the students that haven't done anything. So how, what is needed for this, and how did we accomplish that? We were first looking at the solution for the LTI issue. And um, with the, 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 the introduction of LTI 1.3 and, and 1.3 becoming mainstream, and uh, as the Xerti community, we had chosen the uh, Tsugi as the implementation of our LTI. And uh, Dr. Chuck uh, did a very good job on uh, making sure that LTI 1.3 was available to us very, at, a, at a very early level. Uh, we decided to at least leverage uh, on the standard technology. Um, also, we decided that uh, although uh, the, 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 the aggregated dashboard will not be part of the Xerti project per se, uh, but we would make the resulting system uh, available as open source from the start. So uh, that gave, uh, gave us also a kind of a, uh, a framework uh, of which technologies to use uh, um, and um, uh, which libraries we could use and which we couldn't use. And it was also um, uh, to, to be able to create an aggregated dashboard, you have to know what to aggregate. So we needed a kind of a register uh, where uh, we would record those relations. And if you have um, 
uh, if you want to make such a register, you, you need to have the metadata of modules uh, to be able to present them in, in the dashboard. And that also um, meant that, that uh, there is a, a danger that uh, uh, the maintenance of metadata would become very cumbersome. So, so one of the things that we would try to do uh, is uh, make sure that there is only one place where the metadata needs needed to be maintained. Um, and all this, all of this, uh, resulted in the following design structure. Uh, the central hub of this aggregated dashboard will be a course register. Uh, it will contain uh, the courses that can be viewed in the dashboard. Uh, it will harvest the metadata overnight. And it will from uh, uh, in this case 30. Uh, so it will. Uh, so that 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 means that uh, the metadata is entered uh, together with the learning object and kept with the learning object and then harvested to the course register. And uh, the course register should also be able to override names, labels, uh, order of modules shown in the dashboard. That's one of the other things that we learned from, from the standard 30 dashboard, uh, that um, the standard 30 dashboard uh, uh, retrieves the names and labels from the XAPI data. And uh, if you made a typo in there, in, in one of the labels, uh, it was actually impossible to correct because if you would correct it and then all of a sudden uh, you had two disparate uh, uh, two separate data sets uh, so it was absolutely clear that um, things like names and labels uh, etc uh, we should be able to correct them and and the, the the best place to do that would be the course register also, from the start, uh, we envisioned, we, we're not there yet, but we envisioned that uh, uh, we should be able to uh, include an aggregate more data than just 30. Uh, if we enable the course register uh, to add modules for uh, from, say, H5P or Sakai or Moodle, uh, then we could uh, show that data uh, as well. And the central communication technology will be uh, LTI 1.3, uh, in this case, Tsugi. Uh, and and the, the, the main one of the main reasons to use LTI 1.3 specifically, or one point, uh, LTI Advantage specifically, is that is uh, the way we retrieve uh, the enrolled users and also the role that the user has in the course. And that means that we will also be able to um, uh, show the dashboard to the student because we know uh, that the enrolled user is a student and we will be able to limit uh, the view to only his own data. So that brings us to this uh, rather complicated diagram. Um, it's, uh, it's extra complicated because I try to capture uh, both both the, the launching of uh, learning objects and the tracking of learning objects and then uh, the harvesting of the metadata and also how uh, the dashboard then retrieves all that data. Uh, so let's start with the uh, launching of the uh, uh, learning object and capturing the events. Uh, the LMS typically uh, does an LTI launch on a Xerti object and the Xerti object just sends XAPI events to the LRS. Uh, then for the course register overnight, that metadata will be harvest, harvested. And then to have a view uh, of the aggregated dashboard, uh, the, the same LMS does an LTI launch of the dashboard and the dashboard communicates with the LRS and the course register. Uh, in real time, uh, or at least uh, uh, as, as fast as possible, um, to show the aggregated data. So we we do not um, uh, have an intermediate database where all the data is uh, gathered together. The dashboard retrieves all the data it needs uh, to show the uh, the, the graphs. <clears throat> 
Uh, in the future, probably uh, we will deviate from this and probably we will aggregate uh, historical data in a separate database attached to the course register, uh, which will also enable us to, for example, uh, uh, have um, terms and periods and uh, save data from older modules and also have a, a progressive way to maintain courses and maintain modules. Uh, that's one reason to do that. The other reason to do that is uh, probably um, uh, how do you in the, in the performance of the dashboard because gathering all this data on the fly is quite uh, expensive. Uh, and you have to be a bit patient uh, before the dashboard opens at the moment. So where does this all start? Well, it starts with the Xerti objects or any learning uh, objects. And in this case, uh, uh, what's specifically important for us is the, the metadata. Uh, is what, what modules belong to what course? Uh, so the most important metadata field for the dashboard is just this one field. Uh, um, and uh, as an indication to the order of the modules within the course register, uh, you could yeah you can number the modules, but uh, as you can overrule that uh, in the course register, that's not that important. The, the, the most important metadata field uh, for the whole dashboard is the course. Uh, that brings us to the course register, which is the central hub uh, for the aggregate for the data to be aggregated. And um, the course register is uh, our own development. It's um, C sharp dot dot um, uh, net core application. So it can be deployed on a Windows machine, but also on a Linux machine. Uh, we deploy it on Linux. Um, and uh, in the main, that's so why we, we have some items already to uh, make sure that uh, for the future that we can also uh, create dashboards on a higher uh, aggregation level than courses. Uh, so, uh, but uh, that's not implemented in the dashboards yet. But the course register already enables you to create um, uh, educations uh, which contain a curriculum of several courses and a course contains several modules and a module contains several interactivities and so forth. Um, th this is a, a, a example, a demo install. And in the, this demo install, uh, you can clearly see that most of the, the uh, Xerti objects that are uh, in the connected Xerti install have no metadata. So it doesn't know the course name. So 1721 modules are not uh, uh, correctly recognized as being part of a course. Um, and so we will look into this course uh, about images. And uh, this course has four modules, um, which is actually not true. Uh, the course has, has uh, uh, three modules, but um, I can show you what happens. Uh, <clears throat> this is the module view. And then uh, this module is uh, the, the, the value of audio. Uh, that shouldn't be in this course at all. Now, if you have uh, the rights in this uh, uh, course register program, it's quite easy to just switch this off. And now, uh, and if you do that, the dashboard would not um, take that module into account and only concentrate on these, these three. Um, and um, you also see here the numbering 112. Uh, if you want to uh, correct that, it's just a matter of editing these names and that will be used in the dashboard. So, so this is a place where you can organize um, the, the, the data to be shown in the dashboard. And the harvesting is just a, a console application that runs through a cron job. Uh, and whether you run it one time a day or, or each hour doesn't really matter. <clears throat> and we also made sure that uh, whatever uh, uh, whatever data you changed here is not overwritten.
Then that brings us to the connections. Uh, so we use LTI 1.3. Uh, that means that the Xerti install, uh, where the Xerti objects are, have to be connected to uh, an LMS uh, or uh, another uh, LTI provider, but, but in general, it, it's, it would be an LMS. Uh, the dashboard itself uh, would, have, would have to be made available as an, an LTI um, tool. Uh, and uh, in Xerti, uh, we used Tsugi, another Aperio project, uh, to do that. And we didn't even uh, bother to uh, write our own uh, front end. We just used the Tsugi admin panel uh, to add tenant keys. <clears throat> Uh, we do the same for uh, uh, for the dashboard. So that's also a Tsugi panel. You can't see the difference here. But it's, it's just using um, a different uh, instance of Tsugi. And these end up as external tools. Uh, this is for the, the Xerti install, and this is for the dashboard in, uh, for example, Moodle. Uh, but whether whether it's Moodle or Sakai or it's learning, that doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, we uh, tried it in Moodle. We tried it in in, in uh, Sakai. We tried it in several uh, LMSs, and it seems to work quite okay. And then that allows you uh, that uh, that allows us to to build. Um, uh, uh, a Moodle course. In this case, it's just a, a course with three modules. Uh, the three modules about images. Uh, so the fourth module about audio is not part of this course, so it shouldn't be in the dashboard. So these are just uh, uh, LTI external tools. Uh, these three, the, the red ones, uh, are tools from the Dirty uh, install and the dashboard, the aggregated dashboard, is uh, an external link to the uh, dashboard tool. <clears throat> and this brings us to uh, this is the result an aggregated dashboard that would uh, that retrieves the enrolled students through. Uh, the member and role services of LTI 1.3. Uh, it knows that the number of modules is four in this case, eh, because this is still uh, with the, the wrong module in there. Um, and it gives you uh, a nice overview of uh, the activities that took place. Uh, and by default, um, it will show you the period that is also stored in the course register. It gives you a brief summary of uh, where the students are. Um, and then if you press this button, you get to the module overview. By the way, this, this, this is what the teacher uh, will, will see. Uh, if, you are, uh, if, you have a, if you are a student and you start the dashboard, you will not. Uh, this, this page will be skipped and this page will also be skipped. Uh, this is a page uh, with uh, all four modules um, listed uh, uh, with some um, uh, data, uh, aggregated data, and the average score, average time spent, uh, the number of attempts, etc., uh, the activity uh, of uh, the specific modules. And uh, then, last but not least, uh, a student dashboard with all uh, the, the, the aggregated data, so the, the activities of all over all four modules and uh, the, the average score over all four modules and the number of attempts and the average time spent, and then that separated into the four modules. And if you are a student and start the dashboard, you will see this screen. So when, uh, uh, as a, when we were working on uh, the harvesting of the uh, of the uh, thirty into um, the course register, we also realized that harvesting in general would be uh, interesting as well. Uh, so what we also created is the possibility to harvest a thirty install using OAI. Uh, and uh, OAI is a kind of a separate uh, plugin that you uh, plug into the Xerti install. 
And if it's enabled, you get a, a, a much richer metadata uh, field. Um, uh, and it gives you some, some extra hints. And uh, this is the most important one. Uh, you have to agree uh, to share this project uh, through OAI and, and, and confirm that there are no copyrighted materials or no copyright infringements in this project. And uh, one of the things I want to try out tomorrow in the Stack Hack is connect a ZERT install to uh, Open Equella using OAI. So we've got about three minutes left. Um... Well, yeah, that brings me to the end of my talk. Uh, and if people have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Which LRS is being used? Ah, okay. Uh, Francois, uh, the learning locker. We use learning locker. Uh, the, the, the code is optimized for learning locker. We've tried it. Oh, uh, Inge has already uh, answered that question, I see. We've tried it as well with the SCORM.com uh, LRS. Yes, and did some tests. Well, if you have any questions later on, um, I will share yeah, my. Uh... So I had one more question. Uh, did the student Rob Roster update using LTI integration? Uh, the, the, there is no roster update in Xerti per se. I, I mean, uh, uh, the only thing we do in the dashboard is is pick up the enrolled users, and yeah, we, we yes, we do use LTI integration for that. If there are any questions later on, uh, my um, uh, information is available at the end of the presentation. I will make the presentation available to you as well. And feel free to contact me.